Hey, and welcome to module four of this Django REST framework course. We'll be writing some tests today. Uh, we built some endpoints and models and serializers in the last module, so it's all about testing today. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, and welcome to module four again. So, Last video, like I said, we built uh, we built an endpoint, a model, serialize and a view set, so we can actually make calls to our uh, API now. Worked very, very well, really happy with it. Let's do some testing, all right? So before we start, please like, comment on this video, subscribe, click the bell, all of that kind of stuff. It helps me grow the channel. I mean, it's good to hear, have feedback as well, right? So, okay, you can see on my uh, Visual Studio code here, actually, that I've got Docker running already. Um, as a hangover from the last video, which I recorded a few moments ago. This is Docker running now, okay? So it's a Dockerized project. You can do it one way or the other, but I would strongly advise you to use Docker because that's what I'm doing. Module four, steps. Go into module four. If you're worried about the configuration of your um, project currently, then just double check here. I mean, let me move this down. Your project should look something like this, okay? So just double check, have a little look. And if it's not, pause, clone it down to module four, or change the directory configuration. Be splash splash, you're all good. Okay, so we've done the endpoint. This is all about testing. Now, uh, Django REST framework comes with a built-in API client. So we in, in Django, we have unit tests, right? So we can um, test views, test functionality, test uh, methods in, in models and things like that, right? So. Uh, what we want to do in this particular case is we want to test that endpoint okay so we want to just i mean i did it in the in, in docker but we want to do this in a programmatic way so that when docker fires up or when this is in a, in a live production site those tests are carried out before we deploy so we want to make sure that if we change some functionality add a method add a field in the database that things don't come falling down like a um, house of cards i was about to swear then um <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and do some tests, right? So if we go to back end, go to core, there's a test file there. Django assumes you're gonna write tests because applications without tests are failed by design, right? So let's go ahead and get all this code. It'll be a short video I would have said today. Go into tests, control A, control V, and there we have it. These are all of our tests. Framework, REST framework .test import, and we're importing API client. So what that does, it creates, um, it's, it's like a, uh, a client that's being created. Um, similar to when you run your server, you then are able to make a request direct to the, the web page. This is creating kind of a dummy client. So you can then make a post request via the client. That's how it's working. And we've also got the API test case. So these are the two classes that are written in Django REST framework that facilitate what we're trying to do. We're testing this endpoint, okay? Again, we're bringing in status. As we know, the status file in REST framework, you know what, let me show you. Rather than talking about it, let me show you. REST framework, look for status. And in here, look, we've got HTTP 100 continue equals 100. You've got all these different things we have access to all of this right okay so status http 200 okay that's the response we're passing through when we get the request back from the api okay so that's how that's the best way to do it probably you can pass through manually put 200 there but it's best to use the status file from rest framework that's what i find okay so that's all we're inheriting from this is a rest api test unit case so that's all we need. Um, every uh, class, um, test class that we have has to have a, uh, a setup method. This is where we set up the client. This is where we create model instances in our test database so we have something to call. So we have self.client equals API client. This is instantiating that API client so we can then use it to make a call using requests. Actually, no, not requests. We would use requests, but we're using the built-in API client. Uh, data, so this is just a dummy data, Billy Smith, this is a test message, and Billy Smith at test.com, and the URL slash contact. Okay, so they're the, they're, they're the variables that we'll be now using in our each and every test case, and we need to be thorough as we possibly can with these tests. So every possibility of a success 
and a failure, we want to see if we can just capture because then if we do make a change in the serializer, in the viewer, in the model, then we'd expect the test to fail if it was, you know, um, instrumental to how it worked, right? So if we, if we changed email field to a character field or an integer field, not that we would, but if we were to, we'd expect these test cases to pick them up. So as you know, when you write tests in Django, the test method, each test needs to, we need to uh, append test underscore, prepend test underscore. That's then Django will automatically find those test cases, okay? First test case is to create a contact. Nice and easy. Data is self.data. The reason I do that is because we're gonna change that data dictionary in, a, in another test. But the first thing we always do is we create a data variable from self data that we can then model with. The response equals, we've got client dot post, we're posting the URL and data, okay? And we have three assert equal statements. So assert equals we're expecting 200. Status code should be 200. So if they match, happy days. Assert equal, so we should now have one contact instance in the database test database and also that we should now receive or see an instance where the title not name the title in the database is Billy Smith because that's what we're doing here okay that's what we're doing so we're creating an instance we're saying right there should be one in the database now and that one should be title equals Billy Smith they're the three assert equal statements if it works that'll be a success create contact without a name how do we do that create a data variable again, and then we use the dictionary method called pop, function called pop, and that will remove the name key value pair from the dictionary. So um, it will now look like that, essentially. We'd expect an error, and we would expect it to be 400 bad requests. And I know it would be 400 bad requests because we've got 400 bad requests here. And we've also got no, we haven't got it in there. It's just in the view. All right, okay, so if, if it's invalid, for whatever reason, 400 bad requests. Back to tests. We do the name for, the same for. I know we're not, we're, doing, we're focusing on names first. So um, if name equals blank, okay? So it's a required field. We need to be passing something through. So we change the name instance. So rather than it being empty, like no name key value pair, we're passing this through. And we'd expect that to be a 400 bad request because in the serializer required true. Okay, so we and in the models, what have we got in the models? Uh, we can't see it's in the ex uh, we're extending Django extensions, don't worry about that. So we're expecting 400 back if that's blank. We remove message 400 requests, we change message to blank 400 requests. See what I'm doing here? Email without email. So we remove email. We did this out in the last video. Uh, we did this, however, not in a test case, we did this in Docker, and then we change email to uh, blank, and then we change email, because this is an email field, we change email to just a string with, it, with no ampersand at all, so that is no, that's no longer an email. I would expect that to be 400 or so. Now, you could ex carry on with these tests, I'm sure there's 101 other ones you could write, but I think this is as thorough as we can get for a very basic contact page. If you had a get request and a list request, so a get request to retrieve a list and an individual instance, you would have different test cases, but we're not in this, this case. So there are test un unit tests. What do we want to do? We want to go ahead and do Python manage.py tests. And we can do that in Docker. Open up app. Sorry, open up API. Open up CLI. Go Python manage.py test. It tests probably tests what have we got here okay so we've got a failed one here assert equals so where are we we're in line 28 line 28 so assert equals response status code oh it's that's because i removed that and saved it my bad so that's correct right so we're expecting that Change that I've got volume set up in Docker, so that change is now in Docker. Um, we can now go Python manage.py test. We should now get 
there you go, eight tests run, all okay. Happy days. If we actually, we put restart, that should, uh, I don't want to go in logs. Yeah, there we go. So it's run the test as part of it because in Docker, we've got an endpoint. And that endpoint is just automatically running tests if there are any tests. So we make migrations, we migrate and we test to make sure everything's okay. So we can see in Docker if the test case are working as well. He's saying bad request, contact. I think it's because we're using the view set. So, um, you know, when we went to the browser in the last module, it might have been earlier in this one, it will blend into one. Um, when we visited um, forward slash contacts to come up with that error page, it's because we are not, we haven't got a query set listed in the, um, in the view itself. So if I was to change that, that would be fixed. But you know, this is not the end of the world. But that's the re that's the reason why I would need to put in here query class. I forget what it is now. Um, anyway, there we have it. That is the test app and running with Compose Build. We've already done that, and we can go ahead and make another another um, call to the API, which we can do actually. Now, if I go into uh, yeah, right. So let's just, just double check, make sure it is working. So if I go back into app, go into CLI, and if I just use the top command, which is HTTP, there you go. It's created a new one. So now I've got two instances in the database. Okay, that's that. What? Happy days. So now use the following command to check the database for the new entry. So what we can do is in Docker, we can go into API, go into CLI, we drop in there Python manage.py shell, I appreciate that is a little bit small, but you're following along on your, on your screen. We should, created, it's interesting, is that a typo? Created. Let me have a look. Migrations. Let me have a look. Um, that might just be a typo. Okay, let's go ahead and go. C equals contacts dot objects dot all. Okay, we've got two in there. So C and C dot title. There we go. Oh. Act back query set. Uh, I see. Sorry, I do apologize. Title. Okay, and now you should see it say Bobby Stenham. Okay, so um, there's a typo in the in the command in the in the module there. So all we're trying to do is we're using the built-in Django shell and we're making it we're using their Django database API call. We're importing contact from um, core and then we're retrieving all instances in the database and we just we, we were expecting two in there because I made two calls to the database okay so there we have it there we have it let's go back into the preview that's it that is done that is module four um, your new configuration should look similar to what I've got on the screen here I'm not going to waste time and go through that pause it and have a look and make sure we're on the same page you should be able to make calls now to the api in the same way i am don't worry about that bad request for contact we know what that is good to go right so please like and drop me a comment give me some feedback um also subscribe and click the bell obviously it helps me grow the channel and thank you very much for watching i will see you in module five thank you bye, -bye.